fellow southern Cameroonians, fellow Ambazonians in all of the 13 counties of our nation, namely Fako, Mezam, Momo, Ndian, Menchum, Kupe Maninguba, Boyo, Meme, Bui, Manyu, Donga Mantum, Lebialem, and Ngo Ketunja counties. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, fellow Ambazonians, in the diaspora, the Americas, Europe, Asia Pacific, and the continent of Africa. Dear compatriots and freedom fighters, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good day, and good evening. Accept warm greetings from the Governing Council. This journey of the restoration of the independence of our nation is in full gear, and we want to thank you all for your voices and messages from all corners of the world. We are very encouraged by the enormous show of support and solidarity from our people back home. We want you all to be reassured that we are in this journey together until we get to Boya and restore the sovereign statehood of Southern Cameroon and Bazonia, which we can be proud to call our home. Let me start by addressing the three categories of Southern Cameroonians, the three categories of Ambazonians, in the face of what has become known as the Anglophone problem. These three categories are the Unionists, the Federalists, and the category to which I belong, the Nationalists. Starting with the Unionists, those who are in the status quo in the government, the political actors here form the integral part of the present system. This group of persons often have no allegiance to their people, no concern for the future of their neighbors because they and their families are fine. This category also includes civil servants whose income is from the government. These include contractors and state agents of the present system. Their financial security is threatened and they are not ready to pay the price for freedom. This category also includes those who are emotionally attached simply by fear. These are mostly mothers and grandmothers whose children have married nice people from the Francophone region. The second category is the Federalists. They are motivated by other motives, but some are afraid of the situation of conflict that may arise and lead to the massacre of Southern Cameroonians. These people believe that if we can vote our governors and key state authorities, all will be well. Most people in this category should be reminded that decentralization enshrined in the 1996 La Republic Constitution is yet to be effective, and this is deliberate to maintain the status quo. The Federalists must be reminded that the same system that changed the status quo from the Federal Republic to a United Republic, disregarding the 1961 Constitution, still, is still running things in La Republic and have a historical record for their consistent disregard of the law when it doesn't fit their agenda. This category of persons refer to the AAC-1 and AAC-2 outcomes that led to the 1996 Constitution of Decentralization, which is evidence of La Republic's cosmetic fixes to every sociopolitical socio -political problem. I want to say that the landscape here shows people, for the most part, of an older generation. Let me, the third category is the nationalists. This category to which I belong is made up of those who stand for the restoration of the sovereign statehood of Southern Cameroon. These are the people who are saying that any place is better than here. Any place is better than the status quo with the Republic to Cameroon. These are the people who want to go back to their roots and rebuild a nation that they can proudly call home. This category which I belong believes that the future of Southern Cameroon does not lie in the hands of the older generation. This is manifested through the present young generation that is demonstrating a commitment to obtain their freedom. This group of Southern Cameroonians, this group of Ambazonians, are clamoring for the restoration of their own nation, and they believe that the jobs must be complete, this job must be completed, and it must be completed now. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, 
fellow Ambazonians. No matter the group to which you belong, you have a right to be here. It is your right to belong to your group, and nobody should force you to belong to another group. The fight for freedom must be desired from within and should not be imposed by anyone. Consequently, if people want to give into the status quo, God bless them. They have a right to stay where they are. In life, you make choices, and ultimately your choices eventually make you. Having said that, it's important to pose the following key questions. Questions to the unionists. What benefits have you derived in this union for the past 56 years? Have you not been told to speak in French everywhere you go to, even in southern Cameroon? Have you not been considered as second-class citizens when you interact with authorities of La Republique du Cameroon? Have your children not been passed over or discriminated against when it comes to admissions into national institutions, when it comes to jobs, when it comes to pay, when it comes to promotion? Is that the kind of system you want to continue to live under? What exactly do you benefit from the system other than your daily bread and something to cater for your children? Do you believe that this system would ever change? And if it does, will it not change for the worse? If it did not work in 72, why do you now believe that this bond is going to cure the terminal illness that the regime has inflicted on us for the past 56 years? You know, Albert Einstein has made it very clear. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Our people should not be lured into insanity. And our youths are clearly aware of this. And that is why they have taken to action. That, they, that will yield a different result. Since October 2016 till date, we have noticed total silence by the unionists to condemn the government of La Republic du Cameroon on any of its dreadful acts perpetrated on our people. They never mentioned the rape of our children, their own children, the maiming of their own brothers and sisters, the torture of their very own mothers, fathers, and children. They cannot even call for the release of our leaders and their people illegally detained in the dungeons of La Republique du Cameroon. Some of these people have first-hand experiences of the horrors of the government of La Republique du Cameroon. Yet, they play drums and dance when the master says dance. When the master says jump, they ask how high. These people remind me of the house slave who, when asked by their brother to run, would ask why. This is because they are eating the crumbs from their master's table and they refuse to struggle for a life of dignity. It should be known that we are tired. Every people have a right to self-determination and it is in the human nature for everyone to be free. To the Federalists, these are those who believe and advocate for a two-state, four-state, or a ten-state federation. They submit that because, according to them, we can only gain the restoration of our independence through war. And they are war adverse. We should rather settle for a federation. This argument implies also that we would never, ever have the right to self-determination. What this group is actually selling is that Mr. Bia's regime will continue to carry out the brutality on anyone who calls for the restoration of our nation or anyone claiming our independence. These people should be reminded that our leaders asked for a federation in January. And look where they are now. If these advocates of federalism are right, and God forbid that it should be so, what then does it say of a system exterminate people without arms because they are fighting for their rights. How can anyone believe that they can remain in such an oppressive system and enjoy their God-given right of freedom and liberty? Many in this group are saying that we cannot achieve the restoration of our independence by making our case to the outside world. These groups of southern Cameroonian elites believe that since some had tried earlier and failed, we should fold our arms and not try any longer. 
It is surprising and shocking that these are the same people advocating for dialogue with La Republique du Cameroon as if there have not been any dialogue in the past 56 years. What makes them believe, therefore, that any round of dialogue this time would yield any fruits? Be reminded that the actors with whom you have to dialogue have been in power for over four decades. If these southern Cameroonian elites believe that they can dialogue with this regime that has subjugated us for this long, with their principal leader who has been in power for 35 years and counting, they are free to go ahead. Why do we not believe that another shot at the United Nations, another shot at the African Union, at the International Criminal Court, at the International Court of Justice could have achieved results? The passage of time, the evolution of the world's human rights agencies and influence has brought a new world order. But most importantly, the fire in our youths of today gives me the confidence to say that the time for positive restoration results is now. The idea of federalism, no matter the form it takes, will result in a centralized government that will continue to oppress the inalienable rights of the minority peoples of southern Cameroon. Now, let me talk about the case for the restoration of our independence. Be reassured that the right to self-determination is a human right. Now, how do we get here? Our dream of independence came with United Nations Resolution 1608. At that point, we were independent. Let me take that again. After the passage of UN Resolution 1608, our nation of the British Southern Cameroons was independent. Later in 1961, we were given two options to complete our sovereignty by joining another independent country, either Nigeria or La République du Cameroon. The third option, which would have saved us the servitude of the last 56 years, the option of forming our own nation, building on the institutions that were already in the works from 1954, was selfishly ignored. Our forefathers believed in the sincerity of the leaders of La Republique du Cameroon and therefore believed that the union, which was based on two separate independent states, would be a stronger national union. It would be a win-win for both nations. We have come to see that the, in the course of events, we, they, our forefathers have been proven wrong. Different dates, failed promises, and bad faith have been the order of business from the two successive governments of La Republique du Cameroon, that of the late President Maduro Ahijo and of the current President Paul Bia, 35 years and counting. We can list a catalog of actions that have resulted to our almost total assimilation into the system of La Republique du Cameroon. Our destiny is lost, and we now are wondering where we could call home. If we knew then what we know now, would we have gone into this unholy, unconsummated marriage? That's the question to you, my brothers and sisters. Given all things that never materialized in the past 56 years, what non-revocable guarantees can this government give us to ensure that our children and our children's children will be given their full rights as human beings? As a background to our story, which has been one of subjugation for the past 56 years, I would like to quote from former U.S. President Barack Obama, who said, We live in a time of extraordinary change, change that's reshaping the way we live, the way we study, the way we work, our planet and our place in this world. It's change that can broaden opportunity or widen inequality. And whether we like it or not, the pace of this change would only accelerate. The evolution of the Southern Cameroon with its capital in Boya has been through many stages and changes much, much of which is now part of public knowledge. Historically, our right to self-determination and existence as a state was established by UN General Assembly Resolution 1608 of the 21st of April 1961, which set the 1st of October 1961 as the date for the independence of British Southern Cameroons. Before then, the British Southern Cameroons had from 1954 existed as a self-governing territory with its own prime minister and government institutions like the House of Assembly in the capital city of Boya. 
needless to go repeating the history of southern Cameroons, which we believe you have all taken the time during this period to acquaint yourselves with. Given that all of these things never materialize, what guarantees can this government give us to ensure that our children will be given their full rights as human beings? Each time we have been made to become afraid of La Republic du Cameroon by people who claim we could slam the brakes on change, promising to restore lost glory within a failed union. We ask of you each time to overcome these fears. We shall not, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, adhere to the dogma of the quiet past. Instead, we shall think anew and act anew. We shall make change work for us, always extending the Southern Cameroonian promise outward to the next frontier and moving forward freedom and liberty of our people. And because we shall do what we have to do to achieve liberty and freedom, because we see opportunity where others see only gloom, Southern Cameroon shall emerge stronger and better than ever before. The testimony of our collective resolve over the past eight months, our unique strength as a people, our optimism and work ethics, our spirit of discovery and innovation, our diversity and our commitment to the restoration of the freedom and liberty, these things give us everything we need to ensure prosperity for generations to come. The progress of this revolution and the win of change are inevitable and it is divine and ordained to happen. It is also the result of choices we make together and we face such choices right now. Shall we respond to the changes of our time with fear, turning inwards as southern Cameroonians and turning against each other as a people? Or shall we face the future with confidence in who we are, what we stand for, and the incredible thing we can do together? It is good to look ahead what the future may bring for us. But first, let's attempt to provide answers to the following issues based on the theme, the dawn of the new era, freedom and liberty for southern Cameroon, freedom and liberty for Ambazonia. First, what was the tipping point? Second, which stakeholders have held our hands? And finally, what does the immediate future hold for the people of Southern Cameroon, for the people of Ambazonia? Let's start with the first question. What was the tipping point? Benjamin Franklin indicates that they who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary, a little temporary, those who can give up for a little temporary safety, deserve no liberty, no safety. The tipping point has been provoked by the lack of astute leadership by the president of La Republic du Cameroon. It has been provoked by Mr. Paul Beer. Now, please indulge me to address the president of the Republic of Cameroon at this point. Mr. President, Mr. Paul Beer, notwithstanding the above mentioned failures of your stewardship, on the nation of the people of Southern Cameroon. You are once again given an opportunity to show your leadership as a father. This occurred when the lawyers and the teachers expressed their rights to be granted freedom. These requests were made because of the inefficient government that you have led over all these years. You failed to listen to the cries of the people. Eight months have passed and the situation festered and has degenerated to where we are today. Instead of attending to the demands of the civil society groups, your government banned them, incarcerated our leaders, jailed other advocates, imprisoned other people, raped our daughters, and militarized our towns and villages. Your government's lack of response led to the manifestations on the streets. Mr. President, it is only when there was successful ghost town on Monday, the 9th of January, 2017, that your government agreed to dialogue. This has been and continues to be the people's protest. The people of Southern Cameroon are speaking clearly and loudly by their actions. You better listen to them, Mr. President. No one can lead a people without their consent. The people of Southern Cameroon are making their voices heard by their action because they know 
that action speaks louder than words. Mr. President, I'm almost certain that had you shown a depth of leadership at the start of this disruption in October and November 2017, by coming out and addressing the people of Southern Cameroons, by coming out and addressing the people of Ambazonia with respect and genuine concern, you may have pulled off some goodwill from these people. However, you ignored them with disdain. You sent your troops to maltreat them, to kill them, to torture them, to rape them, to arrest and abduct our people, and transfer them to be tried in a military courts in Yaoundé. If a justice of the Supreme Court could be treated like Lord Justice Ayako Labine has been treated, if a lawyer can be treated like Barista Nkungu Agbobala has been treated, if a renowned academic can be treated like Dr. Fontem Niba has been treated, if a journalist and a popular talk show host can be treated like Mancho Bibixi has been treated, what kind of treatment should we expect for the ordinary man and woman in southern Cameroons? What kind of treatment should we expect for the ordinary Ambazonian? A people whose backs are pushed to the wall have no other option than to push back. They will push back with the least energy in their body. And when they do so, they will not fight to stay within the present status quo. They will fight to go to a new place, saying that any place is better than here. Therefore, Mr. President, you and your government have forced the people of Southern Cameroons you have forced us to leave and to go for good. We learn from Woodrow Wilson that liberty has never come from the government, that liberty has always come from the subjects of it. The history of liberty is a history of resistance. So, Mr. President, we are aware of the plans that your government has been taking to manipulate, to deceive and appease the people of Southern Cameroon. We know that there is currently a plan in the works by your system to invest $35 billion in the Northwest region, in addition to the 18 kilometers of tarred roads in the city of Bamenda, as well as the ridiculous reopening of the Bamenda airport. We are also aware of discussions in the pipeline for large investments in the Southwest region. Allow me to say, Mr. President, that these ridiculous investments coming at this time are a disdain to our people. These investments if they even become real, are a right and should have come many years ago. Mr. President, you can kill every Southern Cameroonian who wants to be free, starting from me, but you cannot kill the spirit of freedom in the Southern Cameroonian. In addition to all the intrigues, your government has repeatedly tried to divide the people of Southern Cameroons with the usual Northwest Southwest slogans. People have been offered bribes. They've been offered positions and large amounts of money. This time, however, due to the spirit of Southern Cameroon that is sweeping across our territory, your offer has been turned down many times. You have failed to recognize a basic lesson of life that no one can trade their freedom for 30 pieces of silver. Now, let me address the people of Southern Cameroon. Our struggle for the restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroons is not imposed on anyone, but it's derived from the, determin the determined spirit of each and every Southern Cameroonian who desires to be free. Now, what does it mean to be free? The people of Southern Cameroons, the people of Ambazonia, they want to be free. They want to be free to send their children to schools where they are taught in English except when they are studying other languages. They want to be free to go to courts and practice the common law with common law magistrates and counsel. They want to be free to go to hospitals and be consulted by physicians who do not need interpreters. Mr. President, our people want to be free to go to the police stations and speak to their commissioners in English language. They want to be free to talk to their administrators in English. They want to know their location of resources to their respective counties. They want to hold their leaders accountable. They want to elect their governors and their state legislators. Having dealt with the tipping point, let's now acknowledge those who have contributed extensively to make the eight months resistance milestones possible. I wish to start by thanking the almighty God who sent us and provided us the opportunity to serve. 
the people of southern Cameroon. What made David so special was his hunger for God's presence. What made him so capable of bringing down Goliath had nothing to do with his brute strength. It was mere a word that came from above. That the battle is in yours, said God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 20, verse 15. There comes a time in everybody's life when we are given the choice to free, to be free or to stand. Today, we are given the opportunity to stick around in the midst of trouble and we have to patiently wait on God's saving grace. When it comes to war, we face. When it comes to wars, we face. Anyone can walk away. It takes no courage to walk away. It's a lot less painful to turn our backs and leave the giant laughing, the giant laughing at us. It takes a courageous heart to fight, to fight the good fight. It takes courage that we will not leave until the battle is won. Southern Cameroon, over the past 56 years, we have withstood many provocations and adversities from La Republic du Cameroon. We look forward to God and stand firm until freedom and liberty are restored in Southern Cameroon. Late former President of South Africa, Madiba Mandela, once said, my, con my country is rich in the minerals and the gems that lie beneath its soil, but I've always known that its greatest wealth is in its people, finer and truer than the purest diamond. That is the same feeling I have for the people of Southern Cameroon. The sacrifices of our people back home are too enormous to count. To our mothers and our fathers back in our homeland, to our brothers and sisters, to our children, we owe you a great deal of gratitude. We owe you gratitude for the efforts you are making to keep the struggle alive. The Lord God will reward you not only with a new nation that you can call your own. He will reward your children's children and they would live free to realize their true potentials in the nation they would call their own land. Some people are asking us where do we get the courage and the energy to lead this struggle. We are strengthened by the echo of late Chief Ayamba, the clarity of delivery of Mulanjo only to me, the tone of appreciation of Fon Gojidinka, the dedication and the commitment of our people back home, and yes, the army of youths on social media who have realized that they want their freedom and the time for that freedom is now. We are further re-energized by news from back home, like that of a grandmother in Bamenda, who with her friends were going to pray at 5.30 a.m. When she looked back and noticed her friend further back, she called her out loudly. Waka quick, come may we go pray for Sisiku. Grandma and her friends, thank you for your prayers. Please, Grandma, know that we will never let you down. The governing council members joined me to say that we will never let you down. This generation of Southern Cameroonians will not let you down. We may not get, all get there, but be rest assured that the question of going to Boya is not a question of if, it's a question of when. When will we get to Boya? We are working very hard to make sure that this happens as soon as possible, so that we will sing songs of victory and carry our grandmother and her friends, our grandfathers, and we'll carry them on our shoulders as we enter Boya in triumph. As part of his speech after winning the United States presidential election in 2008, the then President Barack Obama said, where we are, where we are met with cynicism and doubt, and those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. We will collectively answer, yes, we can, to the restoration of Southern Cameroon's freedom. To the family and friends of our jailed and exiled colleagues and the fallen heroes and heroines of the revolution, thank you for being our rock, for helping us to regain hope after despair, to resume life after obstruction, to restart journeys after deters, to revive strength 
after defeat and to resurrect dreams after rejection. Therefore, looking forward, where do you want to see yourselves in the immediate future for Southern Cameroon? Let me address the pressing issue that confronts us today, that of school resumption in the Southern Cameroon. Permit me to begin by expressing dissatisfaction with those who have treated our clergy and the proprietors of private schools in Southern Cameroon with disrespect and with disregard. The dilemma that our clergy and our proprietors find themselves today in the face of a lawless system of government whereby anyone's security is at risk is something that we should all appreciate. The Episcopal letter by the bishops of the Bamenda Episcopal Diocese to the government of La Republique du Cameroon remains one of the best written documents that addresses the Anglophone problem in our two nations. It still holds true today as it did when it was written late last year. We must continue to show gratitude for everything that our clergy have done so far. The decision-making process of these leaders in the current circumstances can be compared to walking on a minefield. They must tread very cautiously. We might not agree with some utterances they have made in the last weeks, but we remain respectful of the church in the hope that through our history, the church and the people of good conscience have always stood for social justice. They've stood for human dignity and the protection of the weak and the oppressed. Let me also address the students, the teachers, and the parents. My dear students, losing a year or two or even more in anyone's life is like asking the person to start the race all over, especially when others are ahead and finishing. Throughout this struggle, you have been the most resilient because you know what we adults do not know. You know that you are fighting to have a better future for yourselves. And just like anywhere in the world where freedom has been gained, such freedom has been led by the young and the fearless. Your destiny is in your own hands. We ask you to stay focused and never to lose sight of your goal and the future that together we all are chatting for you. Dear teachers, like lawyers, you bear the brunt of the current struggle. Some of you have flown into neighboring countries as refugees. Some of you have become farmers, and some of you are doing other jobs to make ends meet and to be able to put food on the tables in your homes. We owe you a huge debt that will never be repaid. The future of our children is at stake. It is this state that made you to go out on the streets in November 2016. Anytime you feel tired, my brothers and sisters, ask yourself if anything has changed in the schools that you deserted eight months ago. If not, then it is worth asking whether it is worth going back to school at this moment in the course of our struggle. Dear parents, the final decision on school resumption might rest on your hands. You made the wise decision in November 2016 to withdraw your children from their third class educational system that they were receiving. Your hope is that in the 21st century, your children should receive the kind of quality education to enable them become globally competitive. This was not the case in November 2016, and it is still not the case today. Some might ask if anything has changed in the educational system sector in the Southern Cameroon since November 2016. To this question, many might naively say nothing has changed. The same French teaching teachers are still due to continue teaching our children in a strange language that is not designed to mold and empower, but to destroy them. On the contrary, I can tell you that so much has changed from the worst, for the worse since then. Our dear parents, since you withdrew your children from schools, their sisters have been raped. Many have been beaten. They have been tortured and jailed. Our leaders have been locked up and they remain in Kundengi for six months now and counting. Our Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Aya Polabine, is languishing at a gendarmerie cell in Yaoundé and was shamelessly retired 
while in detention. So much has changed. Some of our brothers and sisters have died, and many more disappeared, and we do not know their whereabouts. So many things have changed. 19-year-old Akum Julius, a student of the University of, Boya, of Bamenda, was shot to death on the 8th of December 2016, while another 19-year-old, Nkwenkam Momenkam Taite, a student of the University of Boya, was arrested on the 28th of January 2017 and is currently in, still in Kondengi, together with many other students with a death sentence hanging over their heads. Are you parents going to want your children to go back to school in September, knowing that these students paid these prices for your child to have a better education and a better future? If your child goes back to school, what happens to this one, the child of your neighbor who is in prison because he or she was fighting this cause? Fellow Southern Cameroonians, fellow Ambazonians, few have borne a heavier sacrifice than teachers without pay lawyers without court appearances, traders whose shops have, been, have remained locked on ghost town days, mothers whose children have become prey to a regime that has no conscience and no better plans for their future. Some have been put in different terrible conditions that we deplore. We denounce in very strong terms crimes committed by the government that only aims to destroy the future of our young people. We shall, on the days that our leaders and all those in detention are meant to appear in the military courts of La Republic du Cameroon, carry out public demonstrations to demand their unconditional release, as has been the request of the United Nations foreign governments and other international organizations. The same courtesy should be extended to demand the withdrawal of the trumped-up charges levied against our clergy and the men of God whenever they go to court. On school resumption and the envisaged new educational system for Southern Cameroon. The Governing Council, which I am humbled and have the privilege to lead, understands and appreciates the importance of education in the lives of our children and the young generation. In fact, the Governing Council acknowledges that education is a fundamental, inalienable human right, which every child is entitled to. With this assurance, I'd like to point out the fact that when the International Bill of Human Rights talks about the universal recognized right to education, it does not, does not just entail sending your children to school, but ensuring that the children acquire quality education. It is for this reason that in November last year, the teachers declared the strike actions in protest of the kind of education that was designed for our children the kind of education which lacks the quality that goes along with the human rights standards associated with the right to education. You, the parents, also saw good reason to keep your children home rather than for their future to be ruined by the deformed education system of La Republic du Cameroon. The question we genuinely need to ask is whether anything has changed since November to inspire you parents to want to send your children back to school come September. Are we going to be the dogs that vomit out that which is not acceptable and then go back to feed on that vomit? Certainly not. The peoples of southern Cameroons are a superior breed and our children deserve an even more dignified future. It is only when we compare two things that we can be able to make a determination on the one that is better. I'm talking about the system of education that we have all taken the conscious, conscious decision to abandon, and the one that we, the Southern Cameroon Education Board, we are currently preparing for our children. In this regard, in the best interest of our children and the future we envisage for them, the Governing Council declares that there will be no school resumption in September 2017 which is the beginning of the academic year that La Republique du Cameroon has set. It is important to begin to make these distinctions. And so I would like, on behalf of the Governing Council, to urge all parents to continue to keep their children at home until such a time that we shall officially announce the beginning of the academic year for Southern Cameroons. On the first day that La Republique du Cameroon is calling for school resumption in September, 
all our people shall have white pieces of cloth tied on three branches around their homes and our houses as a sign of the Passover, the Passover of the obsolete educational system that we shall never again be a part of. Please tie these pieces of white cloth on tree branches on your doors, on your gates, and your fences as a sign of your commitment to our struggle. We shall observe ghost towns on such days, on that day from dawn to 5 p.m. At the end of the ghost town, people should pour out into our streets with whistles blowing in the air, singing songs of praise to God and in celebration to show the world that they have refused the continuous enslavement by La Republic du Cameroon. And also as a demonstration of the fact that we shall together as one people set the agenda for the education of our children. The children shall remain at home until the 1st of October, the day of our lost independence. On or before the 1st of October, we shall make a further announcement on the way forward. We shall make a further announcement on the way forward. I would like to assure every parent that the Southern Cameroon Edu Cameroon's Education Board is working tirelessly on an education platform that will transform the educational sector in Southern Cameroon in Anbazonia. We're doing this to prepare our children for the 21st century, for the 21st century workplace, and to enable them to become globally competitive. In his book, Long Walk to Freedom, late and former South Africa President Nelson Mandela said, I have walked that long road to freedom. I have tried not to flatter. I have made missteps along the way but I have discovered the secret that climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have traveled, but I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibility, and I dare not linger, for my long walk is not yet ended. To the Southern Cameroonians, my fellow Ambazonians in the diaspora, you have been the engine of this struggle. Your moral and financial support has been very complementary to keeping this struggle alive. The urgency of the moment calls on each person to double our efforts. One of the big mistakes of Mr. Bia's government is in undermining our resolve to participate in this change that will bring us all back to the place of our birth. Almost all of us will rather be back home and wherever we find ourselves today. If the divinity of our birth cannot be questioned, then our true legacy must be to the people of our land. You may own an American passport. Some may be called British, Germans, Canadians, Nigerians, or South Africans. But the location of your origin is divine. You cannot and you must not forget this. Our nation will be rebuilt by experts who are originally Southern Cameroonians, experts who are originally Ambazonians. The curse of the last 56 years that has sent us thrown into all countries on the planet will become a blessing when we bring back our experiences, our expertise, our skills, and our monies, yes, our monies, to rebuild our true home. We were scattered as seeds across other nations. Through hard work and commitment, we are now mature trees, ready to recapture our forests. I urge you all, my brothers and sisters in the diaspora, to contribute to this struggle, to contribute financially, morally, and otherwise. Wait not for the struggle to be over, then you join the bandwagon to Boya. Ask yourself, what can you do to move us one giant step closer to Boya? I encourage you to start preparing to come back home. Come back to Boya. Come back to celebrate the restoration of our nation. But more importantly, start planning to come back and resettle in Southern Cameroons. Of course, your dual citizenship will be assured in the Southern Cameroons. Your dual citizenship will be assured in Amazonia. Brothers and sisters in the diaspora, 
come back and rebuild your nation. Think of the great opportunity that has been bestowed on our generation. An opportunity to rebuild our own nation from scratch. With time, with effort and imagination, we would make our new nation an investor's paradise. With transparency, accountability, and a high performance governance, we will invite people to come and see what a good thing the Lord has done for us. In the days ahead, the Secretary General of the Governing Council will present a blueprint of the nation we dream. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. That was what Sun Tzu said in The Art of War in the book in 1910. Some are asking if the Governing Council is ready for dialogue with President Paul Biya. While the chances of him initiating this dialogue look very slim by every passing day, we are ready and open to frank dialogue. Frank dialogue in a neutral country. Frank dialogue meditated by representatives from the United Nations, from the African Union, from ECOWAS, from France, from England, and from Nigeria. Frank dialogue subject to the unconditional release of all our people arrested and jailed. As I conclude, May I use the words of Barack Obama, the words Barack Obama uttered in his 2004 address to say, this evening, this afternoon or morning, wherever I'm, you're listening to this speech, if you feel the same energy that I do, the same urgency I do, the same passionate, uh, passion that I do, the same hopefulness I do, if we do what we must do, then I have no doubt in my mind that all across southern Cameroon, the people will rise up and this country will reclaim its promise. And out of this long economic, this long educational, legal and governance darkness, a brighter day will come. A new dawn will come. On that note, once more, congratulations to you all, the people of Southern Cameroonians, and thank you all for being winners in the resistance against La Republic du Cameroon's injustice. Being winners against the marginalization and the rogue governance towards our freedom and our liberty, including diluting our democracy, our culture, our educational and legal systems. Thank you for being against looting of our resources and leaving La Republique du Cameroon as second-class citizens. They call us Anglophones or slaves or beggars in our, our land and for our resources. I dare each one of you to go out there and be the change the change agent for the, free, for the freedom and the liberty of Southern Cameroons, for the freedom and liberty of Ambazonia. Remember what Mahatma Gandhi once said. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. They have ignored us. They've laughed at us. They are now fighting us. But we know what we will win. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless Southern Cameroon. God bless Ambazonia. I am Sisi Kua Chairman of the Southern Cameroon Governing Council. Oh, man.
It wasn't enough. No, it's not enough. They tell you it's not worth the price, so just let it go. But you know you can. You know you. Find your way.